Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Hopefully, everybody can hear me okay. Um, it is promptly 1 p.m. Eastern Time today. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Joshua, and I'm going to be your presenter today. Um, before we get started on our topic, uh, we're uh, just a few things. Uh, use the little red arrow on the sidebar of your webinar control panel to minimize the control panel. Get it out of your way. If uh, you know if you have a single monitor set up, or just drag it off to the second desktop. If you've got a dual monitor set up, allows you to see the whole screen and what we're doing here today. Um, you can, or of course, anyone is welcome to type in questions to me in the questions portion of the control panel. I'll certainly do my best to keep an eye on that. Um, if it's a relevant to the particular part of the uh, present presentation that I'm working on, I'll certainly see what I can't do to get that answered. Um, however, I may not be able to get to questions entirely until we get to the very end. Um, while I will be wrapping up what I'm discussing at 20 minutes after the hour, I certainly won't be cutting things off. You know, if there are questions that need to be answered or addressed, I will certainly be happy to, to look at those and see what we can do to get those answered then. Um, we do sometimes have to ask folks to call through technical support to get question answered, questions answered. It's not because we don't want to have answer them for you. We simply oftentimes need more information based on your particular database and your setup. Um, so we hope you, under, you know, understand that, and, uh, and please call us if, if I do say, hey, please call support, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in detail. Um, if at any point you've seen what you came to see, by all means, choose the file and leave or exit webinar and just exit out of the, uh, of the event. Thank you so much for attending. We will put a recording or video up of this particular event on our support center here sometime in the next few days. Uh, you can always revisit that at any point. Okay, so we're here to talk about audit steps, audit procedures, as they pertain, in for the most part, to Church Windows accounting and donations. Okay, mostly accounting, but it's really about accounting, but it does imp can be impacted by donations as well. So just by way of letting you know that the document that I'm using today is here at our website under supporting, and Support Center. Hopefully everybody should see that. Once I go to the Support Center page and it loads and we type in our search here and we simply type in the keyword audit. Come on. Audit. There it is. And click search. It then says suggested audit procedures. When we click on that and right here is the link to the PDF file, viewer print PDF. It's hidden by that little, there it is, get that out of the way. Viewer print PDF accounting suggested audit procedures. We click on that. It reveals the document that I'm using as the guide or the, or the list of, of steps um, for the webinar event today. So um, it's not in one of our workbooks. This is a document that's out there for any of our customers or users to use it to view at any time and print that out. Okay. All right. So just letting you know that's what we're using as our basis for the event today. So there are nine things on that document. We're going to try to kind of go through them pretty, pretty quick. Again, we don't have a whole lot of time for a lot of detail with regards to some of this. But again, it does explain the reports that you need on it. Uh, you know, we can't say exactly what each person or auditor wants to see on it or what you're wanting that's going to find to see to, that's going to be most helpful. But generally, the reports... Uh, once we steer you in the direction of the reports that you're going to want to generally use for this, then you can decide from there what information is best, you know, is beneficial to you on the report itself. So the first one on that one of those three examples is basically comparing information from donations, you know, with regards to our deposits to the deposits um, as they appear on our bank statement for any given week or month for, you know, uh, uh, period. I mean, and so, you know, we're going to go through that. So, you know, if you've got, you know, we would start in donations, say, for example, the assumption is you are reconciled, reconciling church windows with your bank statement using the bank reconciliation function in our software. So <clears throat> oftentimes what I'll do is I'll come into something like, um, there's a number of ways you can do this. I would come into reports and export in donations, compare and analyze. I, I, you know, you could use the campaign or the um, 
giving summary, if you wish. I'm fond of the statistical report. Um, <clears throat> so we would say want to look at January 1st. So we're going to leave it as January 1 through January 31st. And then simply click Print. So then once it reveals the report here, it shows, let me zoom in a little bit here, it shows each one of our January donation batches. Let me zoom in a little more on it. There we go. Um, get out my highlighter here to show what we've got. So right here we've got January 2017 and our dates. So we've got January 1, January 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th with the totals for each one of those dates that were recorded in donations. Okay. So then what I would expect, you know, most of the time is I would expect those totals to match up with the amounts that I have on my deposits in accounting. So the way I can check that would be to go back over now into church windows and into accounting. And, and like in this case, we're going to go to the bank reconciliation to see this. Um, so we're going to go into bank rec. You can also grab your bank statement. I don't have a statement in here I can show you. So the bank reconciliation is the closest that I have. <clears throat> so I would choose my main checking account. I would go down to my select my saved bank reconciliations, choose January 31st. And then when I jump over to my deposits tab, I clearly see here that my totals, you know, January 1st, January 8th, granted there's a combination of two deposits on the 8th, which I can I can actually do. Again, this is really not this topic, but it's for the bank reconciliation. But if I drag my date occurred up here, it does show my totals here. You know, so 2355 on January 1st and then 3855. So if I go down to the bottom here and go back to my statistical report here, I got 2355 on January 8th, 3855 on year on the 1st, 203855 on the 8th, you know, 4975 on the 15th, and those again all correspond with the bank reconciliation totals or the totals that I show on my bank statement. Now that's assuming that they've all been deposited to the one single asset, but accounting generally is going to show those same totals. Okay, so basically what we're trying to verify is do the totals that show up in donations correspond with the amounts that I have showing up in accounting and for their respective accounts. Okay, so again, just one very important step as part of the audit process to verify that the church windows data is re reflecting what it should. Okay, step two on that document is to review the, you know, the year, entire year's bank reconciliations and bank statements. You know, paying it says paying particular attention to debit memos and other charges from the bank. Well, you know, those are going to show up on, you know, you can go into the church windows in accounting and find those transactions, um, you know, in the software. And the, I'm sorry, let me back up a step. The step one does point on there, pointing to the cash activity, summary of cash activity report in accounting or the transaction journal. And then, of course, in donations, the donations log report. That's one way to do it. I did it using the um, uh, the uh, whatever statistical report in donations. Anything that shows the totals for the date. The log report is another one I could do that with as well. So step two, reviewing the bank reconciliations, comparing them with your bank statements, comparing, you know, particularly paying attention to the debit memos and other charges from the bank, ensuring that they're there. Again, the reports in accounting that they're pointing us to are to under our worksheets. We've got our summary of cash activity, <clears throat> as well as the bank reconciliation report. And that's the report that, of course, is when we go to the bank reconciliation itself. <clears throat> if I choose a particular bank account, select a saved, choose it, and either I go right to print, okay, it then says, um, you know, I choose the asset account, my Huntington Bank checking, I choose the statement ending date for the one I'm wanting, and I click print, verifying, you know, one that I have a zero difference to reconcile, you know, shows any outstanding checks. And I would, again, go through those month by month and verify that they are checking out, you know. Uh, certainly, at least with regards to things like our statement ending balance, there's been no changes to the accounts in that case, the information. Um, step three as part of that, again, summary of cash. Again, again, folks, when you print this out, you'll see the reports that it's pointing you to, italicized 
at the very end of each one of the uh, of the numbered sec numbered points there. Okay. Summary of cash activity is one we haven't looked at that. Let's take a minute and peek at that. So if we go up to reports, worksheets, summary of cash activity, it is literally just that. So you know if I go okay, I'm going to enter you know January one, January one, seventeen through the thirty first. Again, choosing my particular asset account, click print, and this is, as it points out, a summary of cash activity for the period in question. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's my statement balance, okay? <clears throat> but it does verify the activity in terms of summary as it affected my cash account for the respective period, okay? Very helpful report, commonly overlooked and not, not frankly not utilized enough from in my estimation. Tells where our income came from. Was it income or from donations? Okay. Step three on that is saying says select a, a small sample of checks that have cleared the bank and go back to the supporting documentation, paid invoices, receiving reports. Make sure that the charges were approved. You know, so whether you you know if you've got those. You want to go back to any of the records that the church may hopefully, hopefully have kept for a period of time. You know, those invoices, however they keep them, two years, three years, you know, and then purge them every couple of years or so. Um, but go through and look at, pull out a sample list of those um, invoices uh, and bills and make, match them up with the corresponding transactions in church windows. You know, going up to, say, transactions in browse. Or, as the report says, uh, goes into reports, transaction, and choose transaction journal. Okay. And you want to take a look at them, both bills and payments. Make sure that the expense account that was charged is correct. You know, that is what is what it should be. You know, you can do, okay, I want to enter a, <clears throat> you know, sample time period here. You know, so if I go back to 0101 2017 through Oh, come on, Josh. 0101-2017 through January 31st, 2017. <clears throat> I can do clear all and say just check bills and payments and click print. And then here are all of my bills and payments for the month of January. Just using that suggested transaction journal. Number four here, very important. Uh, make sure all check numbers are accounted for. Okay, accounting, reports, and, uh, sorry, transaction and check register. Again, it requires entering the specific date range, so we're kind of using January as our guide here. It does require that we choose a bank account, of course, and click print. And literally, it shows all of the check numbers that were posted in that particular month. And what we're essentially what the system is suggesting is looking for any gaps in these the numbering sequence. Asking, you know, if you are seeing gaps, asking the folks, hey, where are these checks? You know, I mean, if any checks are spoiled, <clears throat> you do want to keep them, you know, they're ruined in the printer or what have you. Keep them, write void on them, and throw them into a file drawer because an auditor will ask you to present those and whatever ones you have. Now, they're not always possible to do that way. You know, a check gets lost um, when sent to a vendor. It's simply misplaced. But you will have an offsetting or an entry in the software that will explain that. And so, you know, they, you know they, it, there is something that will explain what happened to the check regardless of its cleared status, okay? But the big teller for many auditors is, wait a minute, I'm seeing, you know, one or two or three missing checks in this sequence. Where are those checks? You know, we want to make sure that all of that check stock is accounted for. Um, number five, we've only got a few minutes left here, so I'm kind of having to move through this pretty quickly, folks. Uh, number five, if the church has a budget for expense, compare recorded amounts to the budget and investigate all the differences over a certain dollar amount or percentage. And the report for that, of course, would be our treasurer's report. So we would go to reports, financial, treasurer's report. Now, I don't have the ability to search for specific things of a particular dollar amount, um, but I can choose those, like, say, with regards to a particular fund, you know, maybe your general fund. Um, it, you know, deals with all of your budget, 
you know, budgeted income and expenses. You know, you don't have to, um, but you do want to make sure that under your columns tab that you are including any of those um, appropriate budget and actual columns that are, again, of most use for you. This is the only report that really compares budget to actual, you know, how much we've spent or brought in in income to how much we anticipated bringing in an in income and how much we've actually spent or what we had budgeted, anticipated for our expenses, okay? <clears throat> and one of the important things about it, of course, is that on our options tab, display asterisk for over budget items. And, you know, again, one of the things I haven't covered here, folks, is that, you know, you don't have to change the year here under the report in, in accounting to run a report for a prior year. So if I want to go back to 16, I can just change it on any of these reports right here. Number six, compare the payroll amounts to the salary wage, wage amounts authorized. Make sure that the related payroll reports, 941, tax deposits were filed with taxing authorities, whether it's the, you know, EFTPS or with your state you know, Department of, Department of Revenue or Taxation. Um, the best reports to do that would be in accounting would be the general ledger. So if I go to general ledger, say, I might go, okay, under single account, type in my 941 taxes payable, maybe <clears throat> unchecking all of my transactions except for payments, and then click print. You know, so here would be my payment amounts. Then, assuming these would be my 941 tax amounts, payments that I would be paying, then I could jump over to payroll then and, and run and verify that those amounts can be, uh, were matched up in payroll. So if I go to, whoops, let's get out of donations here. So if I can now go into payroll... reports and pay period deductions reports. I would enter these particular periods as they correspond with my deposit schedule. So, you know, in this case, if my deposit schedule is monthly with the IRS, I want to verify that this nine, let me zoom in a little bit here, this 941 total that payroll says I owe, right here, folks, 941 deposit right here, that that amount for each one of the deposit periods is can be matched up and corresponded correspond with a particular transaction or payment transaction in the accounting module. That's just ensuring that they're paid and that the payments are recorded. Yeah, you want to go online with the FTPS or what have you and make sure that those deposits are as well, but they would show up on your bank reconciliations as well. Number seven would be to review the transaction journal for such items as journal entries. You know, generally, not, you know, 90, 90 times out of 100, we don't have a need for a journal entry, you know, to record a transaction in church windows. The logic on that from our design perspective or concept is there's generally a better transaction, you know, a bill or a payment or an income transaction or a transfer. You know, journal entries should be pretty rare, few and far between. You know, uh, just frankly, journal entries have traditionally been ways of uh, that folks have been able to find for hiding money. <clears throat> you know, so uh, there should be very little need for transactions. And again, that is basically pointing us back to our transactions and transaction journal. Again, for the respective period, clearing all and checking just journal entry transactions and printing those and just reviewing those transaction journals to determine their validity. You know, see if, again, including things like comments, you know, to determine and, you know, to see if there's an explanation of to what the necessity for the journal entry was, et cetera, okay? Review, review number eight, review any pass-through collections verified, the collected amounts, you know, were forwarded. And what they were talking about there would be pass-through liabilities. Um, so something like our accounts worksheets and accounts payable reports um, combined with our balance sheet. You know, so down here I could find my pass-through liability and look and see what those are and run those and verify that not only did the donations credit to them, but I had the subsequent payments. And, of course, your balance sheet, we'd want to make sure that those were back to zero. I mean, the pass-through does mean it's going to be entered and paid in out generally within either the same month or the, definitely the same accounting year. And, of course, as a fund accounting system, running something like financial and fund activity report and to look at your funds 
to see, you know, to review them and simply make sure that income and disbursements are what they should be, that they have been charged to the right fund, generally starting with something like your detailed fund activity report. You know, so it shows my general operating fund, then it shows my general operating fund income, then my general operating expenses, and then the ending fund balance. Don't overlook, folks, the importance of the consolidated, either selected month or year to date fund activity report as well. So these totals that are in summary for each account here can be run and broken down in, in exact detail, complete detail, by going into general ledger and here under fund, choosing a particular fund. And then it'll show all of the transactions that make up those totals on our fund activity report. All right, well, again, folks, it's kind of a whirlwind. Um, again, it's, it's not really a conducive topic for 20 minutes, so we kind of do go through it very quickly. Um, <clears throat> but again, look for that document on the website. You know, if you have any questions about it, please call us or let us know. We're certainly happy to talk about it with you. Before we you know, end things here, let me see what questions we've got. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to those. Uh, donated as loose offering that cannot be attributed to a specific donor, so donations will never man match bank deposits. Well, you should be able to, Lori. I mean, we should have be able to set up a giver in donations called loose offering. We have to attribute giving to a record of somebody of some kind. So that's why we would recommend setting up a giver in, you know, even if it's just a donations giver called loose offering or plate offering. That's where all that loose offering money is posted. Then it does get transferred over and will show up on, the, on our bank statements to match our bank, what our, our bank reconciliation and church windows. Uh, good question. Uh, next one, where can the webinars be seen after the event? That's a great question too. So if we go back to our website, churchwindows.com, and we go to supporting. It's right here at our support center, www.churchwindows.com. Once we go to the support center, it takes a second to load here. This is just our ever-growing page of events and movies and documents and everything that we have available from past and um, current and new webinar events. It'll be right here when it is, hopefully between now and Friday. Uh, what else we got here? Um, <clears throat> is there another way to record changes in investment asset value other than using journal entry? Well, generally, Christine, that's one where a journal entry is easiest. I mean, that's one of those ones where it is okay to do that, I think. You know, we just don't want to be thinking journal entry on everything. But in that one, there isn't really a payee, per se. Um, and there isn't anything to be attributing any income to. I mean, you can post a credit to the income or a debit to an expense based on it being a gain or a loss, or you could just post a debit or credit to the fund. And, uh, you know, um, you know, if you do want to see it on the treasurer's report as income, then certainly go and enter, post an enter income transaction um, to get those amounts in there to show on the, in and that then bypasses the treasurer's, or bypasses the journal entry. Um, but in terms of, you know, an expense, then you would be using an enter bill pay bills and having to set up a payee. So a journal entry, again, occurs as being okay in that particular case. Would like to see an income, see income with an asterisk when under budget, over budget is fine. Yep, Paul, that's a great idea. <clears throat> I recommend emailing that to us, you know, with your customer number information to support at churchwindows.com. I think we actually have an email address called suggestions at churchwindows.com too. Um, we just need to know who you are and what church you represent. We'll be happy to get that into suggestions for you. Would you show again uh, where to find the audit pages under support? Oh, yeah, sure. Not a problem. If I go back to our website, don't know why I closed that. I should have left that open. Figured we might be back to it. Under support center at our website. Got to let the page load. There we go. <clears throat> and then type in the search for field. Simply type in the keyword audit. Click search. And the very first one is suggested audit procedures. Click on that. Right here is the link to the PDF file. Accounting suggested audit procedures. And uh, there's the document for you. Woohoo! Auditing is tricky, folks. The software provides an awful lot of help with regards to it, 
but it depends on what you want to see. We never even got into the had time to get into the report formatting, what you can do with reports. There are other movies and videos and and, and options out here on our website for how to deal with you know customizing your accounting reports to get more of that information you want to see. Great questions. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. We have run about five minutes over. I apologize for that. Um, well, again, I'm kind of maybe thinking maybe somebody might be typing something in. Um, but again, you know, folks, if you have any of these questions after any of this, you know, please don't hesitate to contact our text, you know, our text through um, support. Okay, it's what we're here to do and what we help with. So if you're unclear about anything, please give us a holler. We're here to help. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for everybody. Um, we, you know, hope you it's been helpful for you. Um, you know, if you review the document and you have any more questions, please let us know, and uh, I'll go ahead and end it for everybody. All right, thank you all so much. Have a good day. Bye bye.